In this video, I create dramatic overhead lighting in a small home studio. Hello, I'm Gavin Howey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today, you join me in my small home studio. I'm going to be doing a dramatic overhead light shoot. We've got a fantastic model. We're going to have a brilliant beam of light coming down onto him except I'm in a small studio space, and that means there's gonna be some compromises. The first one is just the sheer height of it. It's not much higher than I can reach here. That means I can't get that background light really high up in the air. It will mean that the shaft of light coming down isn't gonna have hard edges, unless you've got some sort of focusing system for your lights, which I don't have. But what I do have is, well, a room with lots of black curtains, so I can control the light a little bit, and I get more control if I use things like grids. Now, grids are great for pushing light in one direction, and I've got a small one here, which will fit onto the streak light we'll be using, and a much larger egg crate grid for my softbox. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's get a model in, let's get some light set, and let's get shooting. So today I've been joined in the studio by Anton, who's gonna be the model for this shoot. But not only is he modeling, he's also a magician. No, he really is. So we're gonna do some magician shots for this as well, which is gonna look great with this lighting. Now this is gonna be a multiple light setup, but we'll get to the multiple lights in a minute. In fact, if you are doing a multiple light shoot, the best thing to do is to break it down into pieces. So the first piece is gonna be the overhead light, the one that's gonna give this shaft of light coming down. I'd like quite a tight beam of light, and to achieve it, I've got a few different modifiers that I can fit to my Adorama Streaklight 360. Now, at the moment, it has just the standard reflector, and I've metered this out, it's all ready to go. Let's take a shot like this, see how it looks. Okay, Anton, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. And when I take that, we get some interesting lighting. Don't worry, it'll get better as the shoot goes on. But we're looking at the shape of that light. And as you can see, it's a fairly wide spread, which is okay, but I'd like a tighter beam of light. So to get a tighter beam of light, I've swapped to the Snoot. Now this is the Snoot specifically designed for the Streak Light 360, and it really will give a much tighter beam of light, but at the same time, it'll take away some light as well. How much? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. Let's take a meter reading. It's actually, it's actually three stops less than it was before. Now I can remote control this, so three stops. I can add that in here. Let's test that. Brilliant, perfect. We're back to our target aperture. Let's take a picture and see how that looks. Anton, are you ready? Okay. As you can see, that is a much, much tighter beam of light to the point where it's actually missing part of the chair. It's just too tight. So this time I've swapped back to the standard reflector, but I've added a grid. And the grid's purpose is to focus the light a little bit more than the standard reflector. And hopefully this should give us something in between the two to get the effect of the shape of light that I need. But when you change the modifier, you need to re-meter. So let's just take a quick meter reading. Yeah, that is, that is very much too bright. Okay, we'll reduce it down. Don't forget I'm trying to hit my target aperture the same as I've dialed into my camera. There we go. Let's take that picture. Anton, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. And that's a really great beam of light. It's about the right size and shape to light both sides of the chair. But as you can see, we've got very bad lighting on Anton, and that's what we're gonna fix next. So to light the shadows in this picture, we're gonna add a second light, a fill light. It's this one right here. This is the Westcott Rapidbox Duo. It's a nice little soft box, and it should put some light into the shadow parts so we can actually see Anton's face. Now I've metered this out already. I've switched the background light off so we only see the effect of this light. Let's take a shot. Are you ready, Anton? Here we go. And of course, it does what soft boxes do and gives us a nice even flood of light, which is really nice normally, but it doesn't really work because you've got to remember, I've now lit that background and that's got to have that shaft of light in it. So I'm just adding the grid that's an optional extra on this softbox, but it's one of those things that's really worthwhile having. That's just gonna help to focus the light a little bit, stop it hitting the background quite so much, but it's also gonna take away some of the light. So let's just do a little meter reading just from the front here. Okay, yes, it's taken away a stop of light, so I can add in a stop of light from the remote control. Let's take a test shot, see how that looks. Anton, are you ready? Here we go. 
And now that background has gone completely black, or at least very nearly black. The grid has really worked rather well, but do I actually need that much light from the fill light? Remember, this has only got to light the shadows a little bit. So in fact, I'm just going to turn that light down a little bit so I get a less intense light. Here we go. And although that looks really underexposed, when I mix that with the background light, that should look really good and give a nice combination of background light and fill light. However, there is a slight downside with this lighting scenario. If Anton was wearing a hat as, well, he's a magician, these things do happen, the light is still gonna come from above, but whenever you add a hat with a brim, you're likely to cast a shadow because the light's coming from above, and that's gonna cause us problems. Let's have a little look. Now that looks great until you look at the face where you can see that part of it is now in shadow thanks to the brim of the hat. And although that might be exactly the look you're going for, I'd like to try and put some light back into those shadows. And that means another light modifier. So for the extra light, I could use a small flash, but it's even easier just to get something like this, just a, a reflector and just bounce a little bit of this light back up and into the shadows underneath the hat, fill in that way. It should be a subtle effect, but it should work. Let's take the same shot with the reflector in position. Anton, here we go. Fantastic. And when you look up close, you can see how there's just a little bit more light in both eyes. That works really nicely just to fill in the shadows. So that is the lighting for this shoot complete. Two lights, one reflector, one amazing magician. Let's take some pictures. Anton, are you ready? Yep. It's always a good idea to review the images as you're going along. And I could see really quickly that there were some compromises I was making because I'm in a small studio, but I also knew that those compromises I could easily fix with a bit of post-production. So let's have a look at one of the pictures and see what I did. Now, I've already done a bit of fine tuning with this image on the exposure and the contrast. Let's look at the color. The color, I love this red chair. That's what really got this shoot going. And I'd like a color to complement that or at least go opposite that. So a sort of a bluey feel for the background and the rest of the shot really would work rather well. And I'm gonna achieve that here in Adobe Camera Raw by going for the temperature slider and reducing the temperature down, probably just a little bit, maybe that's a bit too much. Let's bring it back up somewhere in the middle perhaps. Yeah, there we go, that looks pretty good. So a slightly bluish feel to the shot. Now the bottom of the picture, I would have liked a nice curving shadow to make it look like the whole thing was lit just by this background shaft of light. Of course it wasn't, which is why we have this flat floor. So I can achieve that by changing to the radial tool up at the top here. And with the radial tool, I need to make sure that my effect is on the outside, which it is. And then I'm gonna decrease the exposure by maybe a stop and a half, and we'll drag out a little kind of radial effect just along the bottom, something like that with a bit of a, a curve. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The only problem is it's not really where I'd like it to be. It's a bit sort of soft and fuzzy. But if I go back down to the bottom, I can change the feathering for that filter. And if I drag the feathering down, you can see I have a really hard line, but of course we can't get a hard edge with this light. So a slightly softer edge is I think the way to go. The only problem is it affects everything, both top and bottom, everything outside of that green circle. So I need to swap over to the brush version of this tool. 
make sure I'm set to the minus brush and then minus that away, paint that away so it doesn't have any effect up here at all. I can remove the effect from any areas I like. Okay, let's open up that image into Photoshop because there's always a bit more work to do as well, particularly in a small studio, things like cloning out light, light stands is, yeah, that always happens. But there's also the shaft of light. Now I was limited by the ceiling height, which is about eight feet at the highest point in my studio. I would have liked a bit more, but fortunately I can do that with a bit of post-production. So here it is, there's the limiting factor. I can't see past the top of that. I can actually see the top of the soft box that was closer. But what I can do is just stretch it a little bit. I get the rectangular marquee tool and then just drag out a rough and ready rectangle, something like that. And I can use free transform, which is found under edit. And then down to free transform. I come to the middle handle at the top and I can just drag up. And as I drag up, you see I stretch it ever so slightly, not enough to distort anything too weirdly, but enough to get that up and out the way. Press enter or click on the tick, select and deselect. And with a little bit of fine tuning and cloning, there it is, my final image is complete. Well, that was a really great fun shoot. I enjoyed it and we got some fantastic pictures at the end of it as well. However, if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.